Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today, we're talking windshield wiper motors. Alright, it has been a little while since we've done a failed parts video. I think the last video we did was on the mechatronics unit on hybrids. This is a lot more common failure than that. But before we dive into this failed wiper motor, we got to talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, incredible pricing, and a ton of great videos, including DIYs. So, check them out at shopdap.com. All right, so what is a windshield wiper motor? Well, it's the motor that makes your windshield wipers go back and forth. It's attached to a part called the transmission. And what the transmission does is it connects the motor to the actual wiper arms. And that's what makes the wipers, like I said, go like this instead of just going around and around and around. If you've driven a car of the modern era, unless you're my buddy Jack, you have witnessed the wiper motor in action. I say that about my buddy Jack because his Ferrari wipers never work. So how does this wiper motor work? Well, it's a basic electric motor and you control the speed based on the setting on the stock. Generally, you will have off, intermittent, fast intermittent, and full speed. Cars like my cabbie right here really don't have the intermittent speed, but more modern cars like the Passat, they will have an intermittent setting. There's even a lot of cars that have an automatic setting if they have a rain light sensor, which means if it's raining, the windshield wipers will automatically turn on. On this particular one, power is supplied into the connector by the J519, which is the vehicle electrics module. This is out of, I think, a Mark VI Jetta, and the J519, or the central electrics module, vehicle electrics module, sometimes called the body control module, really controls a ton of electronics of the vehicle. You can see there's four pins inside the connector. You're gonna have a ground pin, and then the other three are gonna be for varying speeds. Again, all controlled by the J519 control module. So you set the speed on the stock, that signal goes to the J519, the 519 sends whatever appropriate signal to the wiper motor, and if all goes well, your wipers are working properly. But since this is a failed parts video, we're not gonna talk about what happens when it goes well anymore. We're gonna talk about what happens when they fail. There's two common failures of this part. First, it can operate at very slow speeds. So no matter what setting you have it set on, it'll operate considerably slower. If you have it all the way on high, it's going to go really slow with your wipers across the windshield. Other thing I've heard these do is they'll actually buzz or hum while they're working. And not just that normal sound of wipers going across the windshield. It's a very distinct, very loud humming noise that you can hear clearly inside of the vehicle. And of course it can completely fail altogether, which will result in your wipers not working at all. What generally happens is actually water intrusion inside the wiper motor. If we go ahead and take the cover off, we can see the guts of the wiper motor. This section here is where the actual electric motor is, so this is where power is going to be supplied. Then you have the shaft with a gear, which is attached to a plastic gear, and the plastic gear is attached here to the portion that attaches to the transmission. Now, if you look really close, you'll actually see water has intruded inside of this wiper motor, causing this motor to work very, very slowly. There's a seal around the outer case that must have been compromised to allow the water inside of the wiper motor. And that's gonna create increased drag on the motor and make the wipers move slower. Now, as far as the buzzing goes, it's pretty much the same thing. And then an all out failure can really be a lot of different things inside of this motor. It can be a loose connection here. Maybe one of these wires that I have all stretched out could come loose or break any of the contact points inside the cover the motor itself or anything inside of the motor housing as well. So a completely dead wiper motor, there's a lot of different things that can go on and that can also be caused by water intrusion. Now, how do we diagnose this? Well, if it's moving really slowly or it's buzzing, it's quite a bit easier than if it's completely in up. So if it's moving slowly or buzzing, we know that the switch works. We know that our signal should be good from the stock to the module, then from the module to the wiper motor itself. Now we absolutely could have a poor quality ground or high resistance in any of those wires, but the most common point of failure is the motor itself. Remember, this is a piece that has movement in it. Things that have movement in it are traditionally more prone to failure than things that are static like wires and connectors. If it's buzzing, it's really easy because you can just kind of put your ear to it 
and you'll hear it buzzing while the wipers are on. Just watch your face. If it's moving really slow, what we can try and do is we can try and grab a wrench maybe and wrap on the motor a little bit and see if that makes it move at the speed that we have it set to. If it doesn't, we're gonna wanna make sure that we take a look at our connections, take a look at our ground to be sure we don't have a high resistance issue. We also wanna check the transmission and the windshield for any kind of obstruction. We wanna make sure that our wiper arms are good. We wanna make sure that our wiper blades are good and that we don't have any other outside things influencing the wiper motor itself. We're also gonna to wanna to pull the connector off and look at the connections to make sure that that water intrusion didn't get inside the connector housing as well. So is this a DIY part? Well, it actually isn't that bad of a DIY, but there's a few things that you really need to take into consideration and really be careful of before tackling this job. Number one, we're gonna to have to take the wiper arms off. That can require either a special tool or a little bit of finesse in order to get the arms off. The older the vehicle, the higher the mileage, the location in the country can affect how the wiper blades come off. They do tend to get seized over time and that can be a real struggle to get the arms off. Once we have the wiper arms off, we need to remove the cowl. We have to be incredibly careful taking off the cowl trim. One, it's plastic, so we don't want to break the cowl trim and risk even more water getting into the cowl area. Also remember, this either snaps into or lays on top of the windshield, so we need to be careful not to break the windshield, which I've seen happen quite a few times with guys taking the cowl off or putting the cowl back on. It usually happens more putting the cowl back on, but I have seen it happen both ways, so take extreme caution and care when removing the cowl. And we also need to make sure that we clock the transmission properly paying very close attention to the way the old motor came off and making sure that we put it back the exact same way that it came from. If we don't clock the transmission and motor together properly, or we install the wiper arms in the incorrect position, our wiper blades may only come up halfway to the windshield, and then when they drop back down, they may actually crash into the cowl and cause damage or break the cowl or they can go the other way and go way off the windshield and only come down this far. So being really careful to make sure that we get everything put back exactly where it needs to go is incredibly important on this job. That's probably the hardest part of a DIY on this particular job. And that goes for the Mark VI motors like this one all the way back to uh, 1988 Cabriolet. We need to make sure that we get the transmission clocked properly. All right, everybody, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube, I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And our beer of the day is from the wonderful Three Floyds. This is Gumball Head. It's a wheat, and like all of Three Floyds beers, is incredibly hoppy.